Michigan Out of Doors Online is brought to you in part by by Tri-County Logging. Experienced in sustainable forestry practices, Tri-County Logging can help you manage your property by keeping your woods healthy and generate income. Serving Southern and Mid-Michigan for nearly 50 years, TriCountyLogging.com. Hi everyone, welcome to Michigan Out of Doors. I'm Jenny olson Silik, and we've got an exciting show lined up for you this week. Now this winter has been a little crazy, especially here in the lower part of the state. You could either do ice fishing or you could head out on your boat on open water. Well, that's exactly what we're gonna do this week. I'm gonna take you out on Lake St. Clair trolling for walleyes. You won't wanna miss that story. And Jimmy's got some other excitement in store for us this week too. Well, that's right, Jenny. We do have a few more things on this week's show. You're going to bring us some open water fishing on Lake St. Clair. I'm going to bring us some open water fishing from Lake Michigan for perch from a few weeks ago. You won't want to miss that. We're also going to have a rather unique story about bobcat trapping on this week's episode. Lots of good stuff. Make sure you stay tuned. I'm Jimmy Gretzinger. It's time for Michigan Out of Doors. From the first spring rains to the soft summer breeze Dancing on the pine forest floor the autumn colors catch your eyes, here come the crystal winter skies. It's Michigan, Michigan out of doors. What a beautiful day in the woods. Someday our children all will see this is their finest legacy. The wonder and the love of Michigan as the wind comes whispering through the trees. The sweet smell of nature's in the air. Great Lakes to the quiet stream, shining like a sportsman's dream. It's a love of Michigan we all share. Michigan Out of Doors is presented by By Country Smokehouse, a sportsman's meat processor and Michigan destination since 1988. Offers a variety of homemade smoked meats and Michigan-made products in-store and online. The Country Smokehouse features an outdoor barbecue and bar. Details at countrysmokehouse.com. By RBM Jigs, a Michigan-based company serving ice fishing anglers around the state and throughout the country. Specializing in ice fishing gear, RBM Jigs manufactures tungsten jigs, soft plastics, and much more. Online at rbmjigs.com. By Angler Quest Pontoons. Angler Quest is a Michigan-based company building boats designed for comfort and fishing functionality. For more information, anglerquestpontoons.com. By Polar Craft Boats, offering riveted and welded boats for the outdoor enthusiast. Whether you're targeting fish or waterfowl, Polar Craft Boats have several models to choose from that keep you high and dry. For more information, polarcraft.com. Windy, cold day, <laughs> little ice out here, and I don't know, it's a little windier than what they're saying it was gonna be, so we're just gonna go out, we're gonna take a look at the lake and see if it's fishable, and we're just gonna try to get some perch out there today. It's been really good this past week, but like I said, fishing Lake Michigan this time of the year, it's cold all dicey. It is, and it's all dependent on the weather, so we hope to get it, we hope to get a couple hours in. It's, it is supposed to die down and then ramp back up at noon, so we're just gonna see what we can do and see if we can't get a few fish in the boat. All right, so, let's go. All right, let's go. Oh, Jeff, is it fishable? Yeah, it's fishable. It's a little oh. bumpy out here, but compared to what it was a couple hours ago, it was a lot worse. The white water's not near as bad, and it was supposed to die down for a little while this morning, so it looks like it's doing that right now. So we'll uh, we'll just watch it, and if it if that white water picks up again, we'll probably we'll call it a day. But I think for now, we'll be able to fish for a little while. And how do you pick the holes out here? You know, we have a lot of old clay holes that are just, we have we have marked. I mean, they're they're all through this area, all the way to the south and the west. And then there's more to the west, and then a couple miles to the south, there's more clay holes. That's mainly what we're fishing. Fishing is a structure. Um, and these clay holes, they hold bait, they hold cover for the fish. And actually, like right here, we just come through to some holes, and that's, um, that's fish laying down in the hole. That's pretty good fish right there. I'm actually going to lock on that right there. So this motor is going to turn around, and we're going to uh, lock right in on it. Does so, that spot lock hold you in these waves? Yep, not, it shouldn't be a problem. Fishing with us today was Jeff's good buddy, Aaron Amber. As we got set up, Jeff ran me through one of his setups. 
Just a little glow spoon. I'm gonna try. I got a different one I'm gonna tie on in a minute, but. Can you jig in that? Yep, I'm gonna put this right on, right on the bottom and I'm gonna barely lift it off the bottom and a lot of times those perch will suck it right off the bottom. Sometimes you barely, you can lift up and they're there and other times they get it, they grab it pretty hard. Now this is no lie, we did not catch a single fish for an hour, but then something changed and well, we were into them pretty good. Riding around here and riding the waves trying to find them. <laughs> Reinforcements yet? Yes, we better do. get the net. This thing's this gonna is, be a toad. This is a nice one. It's just just an eater. That's a good eating fish there. I really wouldn't keep anything any smaller, but that's a good eating fish. We'll take it for the day. Well, once the fish decided to bite, pretty much each setup from jigging spoons to perch pounders, you name it, it was working. The lake was bumpy for sure, but as long as you held on, there were fish to catch. Oh yeah, that's a good one. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Good boy, Jeff. They wanted it moving, Aaron. Yeah. I mean, I was moving it, moving it, and then yeah. he barely, I just seen him suck it and in you, down there. You switched so. over to minnows? Huh? Nope, this is still, this is a rod I have uh, spikes on right here. Okay. Some perch flies and spikes, and sometimes those perch, they just want it moving, and using this fire line, so using this fire line, you literally just see your line move. They just suck that bait in, and that's a good, yeah, that's real good fish. nine inch fish or so, maybe 10. I just got Tommy J's perch flies on. He ties these himself. Nice. And uh, I'm lucky enough to have him give me a couple of them with just, I like to throw about three spikes on there. Okay. And then I'm gonna throw it in the bucket. We're gonna eat that one. This is a good fish here. This one's on a uh, on a minnow. Definitely, I'm gonna tell you, this one's a keeper unless I got a double a little one. My other rod's got a fish on it. Oh yeah, I got one too. We just needed them to wake up down there a little bit. Oh, you got two on? We got a, we got a triple going? Double. Yeah, my triple. other rod had one on there, but... <laughs> oh, yeah. They got the wake-up call, Jeff. Yep, they did. It's a oh, nice fish here. Oh, that's a nice fish. Dandy. That was, on a, that was on a minnow right there. You know, I got this other minnow rod that, that I oh, that's a watch. That's on the bottom. There he is. Nice. Now he bought my bottom one. He bought he bit the worm. There we go. Nice job, guys. Yeah. I have known Jeff since I moved back to the west side of Michigan about 10 years ago. He is an avid outdoorsman who gives back to the sport he loves. After falling from his tree stand years ago, he now teaches tree stand safety, which is where he and Aaron met a few years back. I moved to Michigan three years ago, and uh, my son wanted to go archery hunting and uh, we didn't have a bow hunter safety uh, course completed yet. So met Jeff uh, out there at the bow hunter safety course and he was doing stand safety. So uh, met him at that moment and uh, from then on, uh, we got out fishing and it's been a really great relationship. And then I told him the other day, i uh, happy to call him my friend. So oh, it's been awesome. a great time. Yes, Jeff is one of those guys that you want to be around. He has a great attitude and it's contagious. He is also quick to share what is working when it comes to this kind of fishing in hopes of getting more people to give it a go. Here, this is a two ounce weight, really important out here. And I'm using fire line. You're fishing, right now we're in, we're in 69 feet of water. If you're, if you're not you, there's no stretch in this fire line. And if you're using mono in and in a one ounce weight, by the time you get it on the bottom, a lot of times you don't, these fish can hit so light, you don't even know you're getting a bite. So running this fire line and running this, um, running this fire line, run, I run a two ounce weight. You can actually keep that weight on the bottom because I actually flutter that weight, flutter that line and keep it slack and then just pull the where I feel the, the weight and that's actually when you feel the, the fish bite or you actually just see your line move when they're sucking it in and that's all to do with that fire line where there's no stretch. So it's just little tricks that help you, help you catch fish out here. A lot of guys are out here and they're doing everything right besides the fact that, they, that the, 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 the stuff they're using, they can use the right rigs, the right bait, but they're hitting so light they don't even know that they're getting bites. That's that is a dandy. Let's see that guy. Beautiful fish, oh, especially yeah. when they get the orange and the, and the fins like that. That is pretty. Nice and thick, healthy looking across the back. Yeah, it seemed that everything was working, but even so, Aaron and myself, well, we couldn't catch as many as Jeff. Experience, for sure, was on his side, and it was showing. My favorite perch rod right here. Yeah? 
I couldn't even tell you what blank it is. There's no writing. It was a hand tied rod, and it's just a good rod. Tommy J's flies again. He ties those himself, and I was. Where do you get those? Oh, just a friend of mine ties them up. Tommy, he's one of the best perch fishermen, if you ask me, out here, and he ties them himself, and he gave me a few of them. And I'm telling you that they're one of the between these and the perch pounders um, are, are definitely my favorite. What do you got on there? I just got three spikes on there. Okay. Well, it was about time to count our fish and head in. Jeff had let some folks know that the bite was on, so a few boats joined in and they got them as well. Who knows how long we may have boats in the water this year, but you know what? Nobody out here was complaining today. Here in the southern part of the Lower Peninsula, we've been pretty hard pressed this winter to find good ice for ice fishing. So a few weeks back when good friend Jeff Van Torrey invited me out on the open water chasing after walleyes, I took him up on his offer. Uh, St. Clair Shores. We're going to do a little, I would say, early wintertime walleye fishing out on uh, beautiful Lake St. Clair. So uh, I got my fishing partner Eric Lenz along and we got some other club members dumping in right now as well. So uh, the bite's been pretty good out here. Um, good quality fish going on right now. So uh, the weather's cooperable so we might as well take uh, a chance and go out there and see what we can do. There's uh, a lot of fish that start staging up at the lower end of the river this time of year. There's a lot of food down there. There's a lot of shiners and, uh, and perch and shad. So um, usually it's current related spots. That's where the fish kind of load up at. So that mouth of the river is usually the best uh, area this time of year. They're staging for their, their spring spawn. So you can kind of locate where they're at this time of year. It gives you a good starting point for the, the, the springtime. So. Looking like uh, with the upcoming weather, this might be one of the last times out, so we're going to take advantage of it. Excited to get out. It's been a long time for us, so we should have a fun day. Fish should be going. There's been a lot of numbers and a lot of good quality, so we'll, uh, we'll give it a go. So a lot of what we're looking for uh, early and late in the year is watercolor on Lake St. Clair. A lot of the fish um, look for weeds in the summertime, and they hide in the weeds. What a lot of people don't realize is that the walleyes in this lake are not the predominant predator and we have a lot of big muskies so uh, those fish look for for stained colored water for two reasons uh, one it gives them somewhere to hide to ambush uh, what they're eating and it gives them a spot to hide from being eaten so uh, we look for like that hazy green water is usually the best, something with like a foot of visibility. And we'll fish uh, edges of mud lines. Sometimes the fish get in those uh, in that really dirty water to hide. Um, so a lot of it, the, the, the water color is the structure for us in the early part of the year and the end of the year when there's no weeds in the lake. Um, so a lot of what we did today was try and focus on finding that right water color, uh, go in and out of the that hazy green water. Um, and into some of that dirtier water and see if uh, those fish were hanging out in those transitions. Jeff and Eric found the fish right away and were bringing in the first walleye of the morning. Jeff says their strategy changes with the seasons out here on the lake. Uh, the fall program here is we've been running uh, crankbaits, uh, bandits, husky jerks, um, reef runners, primarily 30 to 40 foot down um, in between 13 to 17 feet of water. Um, as the season went on later, we were slowing our speeds down to 1 to 1 1.2 and it seemed to be producing, uh, producing more. Um, we noticed when the sun was out and it was bright, we switched over to chrome, uh, chrome based baits and um, it seemed like the, the bigger fish would uh, react better to those. So we've been toying around with a lot of different stuff this season. Um, it's kind of like once the tournament slow down for us, we just come out here. Every time we come out here, we have fun, but right now we just, we try to just do what we can and mess around with different tactics and different things and uh, see what works and see if we can find the next best thing out here. We're fishing Lower Lake St. Clair. They're staging up, um, I would say, for the spring run uh, next year in Detroit River. So uh, everything's, just, the lake is plentiful full of food right now. So uh, we're gonna see if we can go take advantage of that. 
All right, these fish will stay here, you think, all winter? Or? Well, I think they'd be here all winter, but it's kind of hard to ice fish down here because this is where all the current, it all funnels down to the Detroit River. So it, it, if it freezes, it's not safe by any means. So I really don't advise anybody to ever come out this down this far in Lake St. Clair and go ice fishing. The guys were taking advantage of this crazy winter weather and doing a little research for tournament season while they have the chance. I kind of use it as a tool to kind of pattern the fish um, for the springtime. And, uh, you know, sometimes, you know, during ice fishing and mostly for the springtime, I'm trying to follow the, uh, the bite on Lake St. Clair up uh, through the shoreline and how they pattern out towards the uh, middle of the lake later down in the year. So I kind of use this as a tool to uh, see where they stage up springtime and then as the year goes on and follow them uh, out to the lake further and further and further. Um, not too many people uh, have, you know, the fish this lake a lot like they do up in Saginaw down in Erie and stuff. And it's getting more and more attention uh, as the years go on. So um, I just, I just, this lake intrigues me. You know, it's a walleye factory, it's a gem, it's hidden and it's uh, getting a lot more exposure now, so, which is a good thing. Um, just a lot of good fishing to be had on this body of water. We're in the mud, mud bite, watercolors, a little ditch here. We were fishing a few weeks ago here on Lake St. Clair, where walleye season is open year round. No, it doesn't close on Lake St. Clair. Um, it's pretty much limited to once the harbor start to freeze up. Unfortunately, um, we don't have any launches that have any current to them, so a lot of these back marinas and launches freeze up, so as long as we're able to get out, um, we're willing to go. I mean, we're dressed for it, we have the gear for it and the boat for it, so. Uh, so we're just picking up right now. Uh, we got some good quality eaters here, some good table fare going on, um, but we're really in search for, you know, that other class, that five, six, seven pound class right now, so gonna make another move to one of the spots that's been producing uh, for us this uh, late fall and uh, see if we can put one of those in the boat or a couple of them at that so give it a try. While the guys got set up in a new area I had a chance to talk to Eric about the Lake St. Clair Walleye Association. Eric is the vice president of the club and both he and Jeff are members who are committed to bringing more anglers into the fold. At the end of the day that's what it's all about. It's all about community and and uh, helping each other out and, um, and and backing each other up and trying to improve conservation, trying to uh, help the local economy every time we bring events into town. Um, everybody benefits from it and try and get new people involved. And um, like I said, we, we're, we're always open to new members. You don't have to be a member to, to, to uh, attend one of our, our monthly meetings. We have a lot of really good speakers. We've had national pros come out. There's a lot of good information, a lot of good fishermen. Kind of what we were doing today is was a bite that was found by club members that were out perch fishing and they ended up getting a, a limit of walleyes and this is an area that a lot of us never really fished before and, and now uh, there's you see more and more boats out there. So it's been a great experience all around. The Lake St. Clair Walleye Association is an awesome club that's been contributing to the fishing community of Southeast Michigan since 1976. As the guys were nearing their daily limit out here this morning, they boated one of those silver colored walleye, which are pretty neat to see. Get these fish in this uh, dirty water, they kind of bleach out, kind of camouflage in with the, uh, with the stained water. It's all pretty fish, real yeah. silvery, real light colored. Yeah, what a great way to end the day out here on a winter morning on Lake St. Clair. Whether you've got good ice or open water in your neck of the woods, you can't beat a good walleye bite out here in Michigan's Out of Doors. Well, we here at Michigan Out of Doors are always trying to promote hunting, fishing, trapping, the shooting sports. And when it comes to trapping, we try to get at least a few stories on each year. Well, good friend of the show, Brandon Nutt, was actually just out doing a little bobcat trapping, actually learning from a friend, trying it himself, and brought a camera along as well. Trapping can be a lot of work. Dan Spolman has been at it for many years and today was showing a few new trappers how it all works as he checked his trap line here in Unit E, the northwest part of the Lower Peninsula. You can see something was here, probably a raccoon. Stepped right there and dug up my trap a little bit, but I set my pan tension really tight, hoping not to catch raccoons and just catch a big cat. So you can see that's the pan right there. It was really interesting to find out that trapping bobcat is in many ways easier than trying to target fox and coyotes, which is good for the beginner trapper. How do you compare bobcat trapping to like fox, coyote, other oh, bobcats land are, trapping? Bobcats are quite a bit easier. 
they're a nice nice animal to trap because you don't have to work too hard at it <laughs> why do you think they're easier to trap than like coyotes let's say i think the coyote just has a, a lot better sense of smell and i don't know they're just smart you know the traps do need to be checked every day and can be set on private or state land in this unit trappers must also have a fur bearer's license as well now, as Brandon followed Dan on his trap line, it appeared that one of the traps held a nice cat. But caution is always important when approaching a wild animal. Once at the cat, it is either quickly dispatched or released, depending on the catch and the size of the cat. So, that's about it. Just gonna, you know, it was a lot cleaner than this. You'd love to be able to make another set here because, well, it can't smell. Yeah. This was a nice bobcat, and after dispatching the animal, it's important to tag it quickly, and all bobcat need to be checked in with the DNR. So the only thing after tagging it is checking it in, right? Yep. I think we've got a couple weeks after the season. Um, we'll skin it, and then bring the skin, the tagged skin, and the skull in, and then they'll, uh, they'll put a seal on it. And then on the skin, and they'll, they'll take the skull. Well, it was time for one more quick lesson for Brandon. Dan ran him through just how to set a trap when targeting a bobcat here in northern Michigan. <clears throat> I got our MB550 here. I like these traps with the offset jaws. If I catch a cat that I don't want to keep and I want to release, it's not going to be hurt. Put this little foam block underneath there to keep the dirt. Set the night trigger. Trapping is not easy. And unlike deer hunting, when you're trying to get within 15 or 20 yards for a bow shot, or 30 or 40 yards with a turkey, in the trapping world, you need that critter to step on a two inch spot. There are different types of anchor systems for traps. And today, Dan was using an earth anchor, which works well. He also sets the trap so that smaller animals like a raccoon won't set it off. There is a lot to consider when placing your trap here in the lower. You're also limited to one cat per trapper for the season. Get our trap. Sit in there good and tight so she don't move. If something happens to step on the jaws, we want to make sure that it's not going to move. See there? She's not moving. So now, normally I'd use a screen, but I didn't bring it along today. But uh, we're just gonna shake some dirt over top of this trap. Once you have the trap looking the way you want, it's very common to use some bait or lure to help bring in the critter. Something usually pretty stinky does the trick. Some trappers have their own concoction, but they are also available where traps are sold. It was now time for Brandon and his buddy Eric to try their hand at setting their own traps. All right, we're on the third trap here. Um, pulled the first two because we're heading home today, so we're pulling all our traps, and we just got here. I'm not sure if you can see in the background here, we pulled up. And I got my first ever bobcat in a trap, so Dan got a nice one yesterday, and from what I can tell here, that looks like a really nice cat, so... We're excited, we're gonna go up there and we're gonna check it out. Well, as luck would have it, Brandon and his buddy Eric were lucky enough to set a handful of traps and have some success. Yeah. You can see these traps don't do damage. If, if you needed to release this cat, there's his paw, you could still do it. You can't even tell that, you know what I mean? So I had him on those two paws there, but I mean, he's a pretty big, pretty big cat. After a lesson with Dan, both Brandon and Eric, well, they were able to get some traps out and ended up both getting a cat. With the growing number of bobcats, it's important, as with any population, to manage that species correctly. We as hunters working with our DNR are important tools in conservation. Trapping is an important and time-honored tradition here in Michigan. If you're looking for a new outdoor adventure, well, there are some old trappers that I bet would love to have you tag along here in Michigan's Out of Doors. Thanks for joining us this week for Michigan Out of Doors. Make sure you come back in upcoming weeks. Lots of great things headed your way this winter on the show. We'll be doing some small game hunting. We'll be doing a lot more fishing, hopefully some more ice fishing as well. If you'd like to see where we are and where we're headed next, you can always check us out online. 
Well, that's right, Jenny. Online is a great way to kind of keep tabs on us. We're on most of the social media sites as well as our actual website, michiganoutofdoorstv.com. We have full episodes of the show there every week. And if you're ever on YouTube, you can subscribe to our channel there and get an email every time we post something new. Lots of good stuff coming over the next few weeks. If we don't see it in the woods or on the water, hopefully we'll see you right back here next week on your PBS station. Michigan Out of Doors is presented by by Greenstone Farm Credit Services, making recreational land ownership possible across Michigan and Northeast Wisconsin. Begin your land financing journey at one of Greenstone's 37 locations or visit greenstonefcs.com. Michigan's hunters and anglers are essential partners to the health of the state's wildlife and habitats. The Michigan Wildlife Council is dedicated to ensuring our hunting and fishing heritage and Michigan's natural resources are preserved for future generations. By Showspan, producing consumer shows including Outdoor Rama February 27th through March 1st at Novi's Suburban Collection Showplace. The show features tackle, trips, boats, outfitters, the trout pond, and of course, Big Buck Night. That's Outdoor Rama in Novi February 27th through March 1st. Closed captioning provided by Randy's Hunting Center, serving Michigan as Ruger and Leupold's National Dealer of the Year and inventor of Ruger's 450 Bushmaster rifle. When I want to fire away stays with me night and day it's the road that leads to my home state i am a michigan man changing seasons paint the scene like rainbow trout in a hidden stream the white-tailed deer in the tall pine trees i am a michigan man i am i am a michigan man that's where i'm from and i'll show you my hands lord above i love this land i St. Joe, Kalamazoo, East to Monroe, to St. Marie and back again. I am a Michigan man. I am, I am a Michigan man. That's where I'm from and I'll show you my hands. Lord above, I love this land.